Here's some tips and tricks on all the maps in Fall Guys Season 2, Satellite Scramble. At the start, position yourself in front of the hammer so that it'll hit you forwards. If you spawn in the front row, aim for the center platform and jump on it. If you're able to pull this off, you'll be in the lead by a great margin. Really, this only can be done if you've spawned front and center, but if you spawn front, it's still worth doing. Also, if you get successfully hit by the hammer, you're able to do this as well. Regardless, once you get on a platform, go to the sides of it. Wait until you see the other platform, then jump and you should be able to go straight to the top while skipping the other platforms. But waiting for it to go slightly up is the key to all this. When you see the platform fold away, that's when you jump to the platform at the bottom. You then make your way forwards as you normally would. Amazingly enough, you can actually jump dive towards the pipe and get in without the aid of the platform. Just make sure you have a running start and you dive later rather than early. Then once you get to the section with the ion thrusters, get on the second row of it and aim for the top part of the vacuum tube right here. You then jump dive on top of the platform. Make sure you jump dive and don't jump because if you jump, you won't be will make it. Then just run down the slide. Don't jump on top of the slide otherwise you won't be able to make it so just run down the slide. The first two sections are quite simple. Just look ahead and see if a platform is near you. If it isn't you can jump diagonally to one or wait until one is nearby. If however you see a bounce pad, I recommend you jump dive on it to boost you forwards. It doesn't matter what section it appears in, the bounce pads are incredibly useful. Once you've dove on a pad, quickly press your dive button so you land on the next platform fast. This technique is called dive cancelling and it basically cancels the floating animation you get if you hit a pad. The puncher section is incredibly easy to dodge. The main thing you have to do is jump over the gaps. While you can jump dive over them, it's not necessary to do, you can just run and jump over them. And as for the red platforms with the ion thrusters, stand on top of one and use it to boost you in the air. With this, you'll be able to skip a row of platforms or wait until the thrusters in front of you is in the cooldown phase, then go forwards. Waiting for the ion thruster to go out is the key to passing a platform like this. At first, this may be tricky to do, but with time and practice, you'll be able to pass it easily. Moreover, don't underestimate how far you can run and jump. Try aiming for platforms that don't have ion thrusters, however, don't be afraid to use them. They're especially useful in the final section. Speaking of the final section, if you see a bounce pad in front of you, use the thruster to boost you in the air and aim for the bounce pad. Pad. If you do it correctly, it can boost you forwards and come an absolute clutch. If you see a disc spinning clockwise, you should run to the left side because if you do this, you're going with the flow and you'll pass through it quickly. If you see a disc with bollards on it, go through the middle because it's much quicker than just going around it. At first, it can be quite tricky to do, but with time and practice, you'll be able to get it down easily. While it may seem necessary to run around frantically searching for points, sticking to one side or one little section and getting points there is the key to qualifying. As long as you and your team are divided up and spread across the map, qualifying should be no issue. The place I recommend you camp at is this one right here where the buttons are moving on a conveyor belt at the edge of the map. The conveyor belt stretches from one side of the map to the other so you can get a few points here easily. If the button is flat on the floor, you can just walk on top of it and get the point. You don't have to jump on it, but this only works for buttons that are on the conveyor belts. So if you see a button that's elevated up slightly, you have to jump to get to it. Also the biggest sin that I see people commit often is that they waste time going to points that already have other people near them. Just move on to another section that may not have as many people on them. Because if there are groups of people in one section, the most likely that means there's a section or two that has no people near them at all. This map is the biggest case of divide and conquer. If you're able to get one zone and your team's able to get another zone, you'll be able to gather points quickly and efficiently. If you're getting value out of this video, consider subscribing. It's free and helps the channel grow. This map gets a lot of newbie players confused. Let me explain. Basically, you have the map in the center, which is laid out exactly like the buttons and the islands that you see in front of you. When you press a button, Button, the map will highlight the path that you have to take. Let's use one of my recent and best games as an example. Currently, I am at the edge of yellow and the map says to go left, then straight, and finally to the left. Or another much simpler thing you can do is just follow behind people. But learning how the map works will help you in the long term. Oh yeah, the map can also show you a fake path, so be careful in reading it. Body blocking is a huge problem in this map, especially at the start. I would say to start at the back of the board and as you pass the ion thrusters, start to get to the front of the board. Oh yeah, and also something that's funny you can do is you can use the thruster to boost you on top of this sign right here. What I'll often do is I will run and jump against these bumpers to give me a small boost forwards. And once you've passed the Roomba section, you can run and jump dive over this gap instead of taking the hex tiles or waiting for the board to come through. The starting section and the section with the batons is where people die the most. If you stay close to people, they'll grab you and the bar will hit you off the board. So what I try and do is I stay at the back of the board and then slowly go forwards. Also, you can jump on top of this baton right here. For this section, I personally take this path right 
here because I can get back on the board the fastest, but it's really up to you and your comfort level. Since most people go to the left side, go to the right side because it's basically the same thing but with less people. What I'll sometimes do is I'll perform guard jumps or I'll jump twice on one tile. I'll explain guard jumping later in the video, but the reason I do this is so I can slow down and let the board arrive. If you're playing random snap, it's almost incredibly difficult to qualify on. Not impossible, but it's incredibly difficult. Here are some things you can do. If the painting is a simple one, like the smile, for example, then only one person is really necessary to do it. And as for the more complex ones, if you don't feel confident doing it, just don't do it. It's easier if less people do it oddly enough. However, if you only see one person doing the complex paintings, then it's your cue to step in and aid your teammate. Personally, I like to break down the painting row by row. So I look at the bottom row, then the next one, and the next one, and etc. Sometimes I'll look at a part of a painting and make sure I get that right, and then move on to the next part. Splitting the picture into small chunks is really helpful. And once you paint a tile, try to jump off the tiles by jump diving so you don't accidentally hit any other tiles. And then just go to the center and compare the paintings and see how it's coming along. I find that three people are usually enough for most, if not all the tiles in my opinion. This map is incredibly difficult to do at randoms, so if you can get in a voice call with your friends, it'll make this map five times easier to do. If you're playing this map in a voice call, three people should be assigned as painters, while the last guy should be the conductor who stands in the front, guiding the players on where to go. One person should be at one side, while the other should be on the other side. Break up the grid this way, and the map is a cakewalk. Right now, someone can just run the tiles and ruin your game by griefing, and say just to open the menu, report them, and leave. Not much you can do in this situation, so just don't waste your time. The button in the middle activates a cannon, which will shoot out a projectile onto the tiles. This is a great way of finding out the real path. My recommendation would be for one person to stay on the button and activate the cannon, while the other three try and find the real path manually. Once all of you guys reach the halfway point, the guy who is shooting the cannon should go and try to find the real path along with everyone else. In general, don't be afraid of just jump diving into the abyss. Brute forcing your way is one of the best ways of finding the real path. If everyone does this, you'll be blazing ahead in no time. A strategy you can do to help you find the real tiles is to jump dive on the edge of a tile with the top half of your body. If you do this, you'll hit the tile but you won't fully fall down. This is really useful in regular tiptoe as well. This will take some practice, but definitely try and perfect this technique in this map because it will greatly aid you. And as for the ending section, my recommendation would be to just leap on the blue platforms and all the way to the crown. However, something you can do is you can actually jump on top of the middle section and actually bounce on it and go all the way to the blue platform. This is a very tricky to do, so just try and leap on the blue platforms and all the way to the crown. As I've recorded this video, this map has two variants, the regular variant and a blast ball variant. Let's tackle the regular variation first. Rather than running around the map, what I recommend you do is learn how to do god jumps. What god jumps are essentially is that instead of jumping on a tile once, you basically jump on it twice. The tile doesn't fully disappear when you touch it, it gradually fades. So while a tile is disappearing, you can actually jump on it. I recommend hitting your jump button once and then while in the air, quickly hit your jump button again. So basically you're doing a double jump. I could be wrong on this, but I find that as the tiles disappear and reappear, the cooldown gets longer and longer. So a tile that may have taken 5 seconds to respawn now takes 10. Nonetheless, god jumps slow you down by 1 second and I just stay on the edges of the map and god jump non-stop. I will say if you master god jump in this map, you can do god jumps on hexa ring and you can do it on hexagon as well. If you do need to move, try to sprint jump or run while jumping to preserve the tiles. And as for the basketball variant, god jumping is basically painting a target on your back, so do be be careful. If you want to aim for someone, make sure you're directly in front of them and then let go of the ball and it'll go rolling towards them. You could even try aiming for where they'll be so they'll fall straight down. People always expect others to use the ball to target them, but they never expect you to use it to target the floor they'll be at. 